On this week's program, we focus on changing demographics in education and how the combination of retiring baby boomers and increasing diversity is shaping Minnesota's future. Stay tuned for this and more on this week's Capital Report. Welcome to this week's program, I'm Shannon Lurkey. In our second of a two-part series on changing demographics, we focus on the field of education, and to provide a framework for that discussion, we begin with our state's demographer, Susan Brower. People who like puzzles may relish the intricacies inherent in tackling the changing demographics conundrum, as the coming decades will bring about unprecedented change in Minnesota. Consequences of the shift to an older population, increased diversity among the younger generation, and a tight labor market conspire together to possibly reduce tax receipts and create further challenges for education and health and human services funding. Some of these changes that we've talked about are going to continue to unfold whether or not we're ready for them. And I think in some ways we've talked about aging for so long, for so many decades, and you know, Tom Gillespie before me for decades has talked about the age wave that's coming that we, we kind of um, either think it's too big or kind of shut down in terms of how, how we need to respond. And I think there's still plenty of time to be able to do planning for what we know is going to happen. Um, and so I would just, um, I would just urge folks to be considering how it is we want to respond to these changes that we know are going to happen. According to the state demographer's website, Minnesotans born today are more likely to racially identify as children of color and have more influences from other communities around the world than at any other time in our state's history. In 2014, 28% of the babies born in Minnesota were either Hispanic and or a race other than white. The increase in racial and ethnic diversity that's happened in Minnesota has largely been since 1990. That's when kind of the pace of, of growth for populations of color really picked up in Minnesota. A lot of what is driving that has been uh, increased immigration to Minnesota. Um, from all around the globe. So it's not a single group or a single flow of immigrants. It's, it's um, really part of a larger global pattern where you see more, more migration for everyone across the U.S., not just, not just Minnesota. Um, so that has really driven the increase in diversity. And then we've seen, um, you know, our populations of color grow rapidly from birth. So we see uh, young people move here. People tend to move when they're in their 20s and just about to be parents, or they are parents, <laughs> and then they have children. And so that increases um, our racial and ethnic diversity um, kind of in two ways. As these newest Minnesotans enter the public education system, increased cultural competency and tailored approaches may be needed to successfully educate the future workforce. The January 2016 State Demographer's Report on the Status of Minnesotans documents the poorer outcomes in education and health experienced by populations of color. In that light, the tightening of the labor market due to the retiring of the baby boom generation highlights the importance of addressing racial and economic disparities for communities of color. We need to be really very careful about develop, very cognizant and focused on developing the people that we do have. So we don't have room to have people marginalized. Um, education becomes very important. We don't have room in this very tight labor market and very slow growing labor force to have people who aren't skilled up to their fullest potential. Um, and so I think that's kind of the other, the other side of, of these demographic changes. And it's going to be a neat trick <laughs> to figure out how to do it at the same time that we're feeling these budget pressures uh, from the aging baby boomers. Mm -hmm. 